Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Now, ICM reached out to me a couple of months ago about reviewing some of their releases, and I was very happy to hear from them and more than willing to do that. Prior to this, I've only ever owned one ICM kit that I got in a job lot of models recently and haven't even had the time to look at. Now I will be doing some full build reviews coming shortly, but the kit I was really excited about receiving for review was this, the 148 scale Bristol Beaufort. This one is the British Dominions Air Force version that was released in June, and it nicely arrived just before my birthday at the end of last week, so thank you to Valeria and Dania from ICM for supplying this kit. Now I am due to do another best of kit review on the Mosquito, but as I have the Airfix, High Plains, and even the old Frog Beaufort, I thought it would be a good opportunity to do an unboxing comparison on these kits and see which is the best Beaufort you can buy today. So first up is obviously the ICM 148th kit I just mentioned, first tooled in 2022 as the Mark 1 I and 1A, and just now with new decals for the British Dominions Air Forces. More on these later. We then switch down to the Airfix Mark 1 in 70 second scale, released in 2021. Next is the High Plains Models Mark 2, which was a 2002 release based on their 1995 Mark 1. Finally is the Venerable Frog Kit, mine being a 1970 release of the Mark 1, adapted from their original 1963 Mark 2 tool. So here we have four kits separated by 60 years of development. Let's see how that reflects in the comparison. As usual, first up is cost. Now the Frog and High Plains kits are obviously long out of production, but you can find them on sites like Kinkit and eBay relatively easily, so including them wasn't actually that hard. What surprised me a little is that the Frog kit was the most expensive, even more than the current Airfix RRP. Now of course the ICM kit is the most expensive one here, but being a 148th kit, it actually sits at the same sort of place in the average pricing of that scale as the Airfix kit does in 172nd. And for those that are interested, yes, I did look at the price distributions of over 4,000 currently available model kits to come up with this comparison. I am, at the end of the day, a data-driven scientist at heart. That means that the High Plains Models kit takes a surprising jump start, closely followed by the two modern kits and Frog Last. Still, early days, plenty of time for change. Now my frog kit currently resides in a plastic takeaway container because the box fell apart recently, but that means I have recent experience of it, and it was a rather flimsy top opening box with a single bag containing everything. The High Plains kit is a little better, with a sturdy top opening box, but still, everything in a single bag with the vac form transparencies just kicking about inside. Airfix has a top opening box, but it's surprisingly flimsy compared to some of the others I've had from Airfix. Maybe it's to just the dimensions as it's quite a long box, but inside the sprues are bagged together with the transparencies protected in their own bag and the decals tucked away into the instructions as normal. The ICM box has quite a thin glossy top cover with the box art, but that just hides this top opening hinge topped box made of very sturdy card and is probably the best combination box packaging out there. Like Airfix, the sprues are bagged together with the transparencies in their own bag inside that. Also like Airfix, the decals are tucked inside the instructions. So ICM are a clear winner here, with Airfix a little let down by the flimsy card used for the lower box. The High Plains box is very strong, but inside the packaging is similar to the old frog kit. And to be fair, that box did its job for about 50 years. This is really where the difference in engineering starts to kick in. Both the old kits have around 40 parts, with the frog kit actually pipping the HPM model here, which does require the modeler to scratch build some of the smaller parts. The FX kit, however, has almost four times that number, with just under 160 parts. Given that the main structure, fuselage, wings, etc., have the same basics in all of the kits, that part count is really located in detail and options. Now obviously a larger scale has more scope for more parts, but even if we multiply the Airfix part count by 1.5, which is the differential in scale, we get just under 240 parts, 
versus ICM's 268 part count, which is close and I think represents the detail level in both kits, but the ICM kit just wins out. The frog sheet, and it is just that, a single sheet, brings back memories of my early childhood and the exploded diagrams with their pictorial symbols are both instantly recognisable and also stand the test of time. They also have some very 1970s aspects, like the ability to mount an electric motor in the engines to make the props spin. Despite being about 30 years later, I did at first wonder if I'd lost something from the High Plains box as the single double-sided page of instructions is more of a general talk-through with a few diagrams to help you out with less obvious areas. Now granted, these kits are aimed at experienced modellers, but it does assume an awful lot. Airfix's instructions are everything we've come to expect from them in the past decade. They're clear, intelligently use colour and call-outs to note important areas of assembly, and are in A4 booklet form. Full-colour painting guides for the two aircraft versions are included as part of the booklet at the end as well. The ICM booklet follows in similar fashion to Airfix's, but the first couple of pages, and so the last as well, are slightly glossy and in full colour. It adds three pages of frame references before getting into the construction, and is very clear throughout, though Airfix's use of colour is a little nicer. What is really useful, however, is a full set of templates to create your own masks for the transparencies. I only wish this wasn't printed on the reverse of one of the full colour painting guides, but I am nitpicking here. Those glossy pages at the back cover all five versions provided for in the kit. I only niggle here being the size of the font used for the decal numbering callouts, which is tiny. In any case, I've awarded both ICM and Airfix gold here, though I do prefer the way Airfix use colour during their construction steps, ICM's frame reference and mass templates balance that out. They are both leagues ahead of the old frog sheet, though that is decent enough even today and state of the art back in the 60s. HPM's instructions are really only a set of guidelines, and probably the barest bone sheets I've ever reviewed, so are a firm last place. The painting guides for these aircraft are going to follow a similar line to the instructions, with a few differences. The frog kit had its painting guide as part of the box rear, and I discarded that as I didn't really have a need for it, but it was as basic as it gets, and common practice for the time. The High Plains painting sheet is a lot better than its instruction, or guideline sheet, but obviously it's in black and white and simply references RAF colours like azure blue. No problem for an advanced modeller, but not exactly helpful. Airfix has two painting options included at the rear of the instructions in full colour, although the printing of the rear one especially feels a little washed out and subdued, and only Humbrol colours are referenced, one of them a mix. ICM has the benefit of the glossy pages for their full colour printing, and also provide five different schemes, two Canadian, two South African, and one with the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Only ICM colours are referenced, and although I've used these, and they're pretty good, I'd still prefer manufacturers to at least reference standards like BS and FS numbers, something that I think I've only seen from Italeri. So here it's a clear win for ICM, FX with a strong second, HPM with a decent bronze, and Frog stuck back in the 70s. Not exactly a fair fight to this, as the frog decals are ancient and show heavy carrier film. The HPM decals look pretty decent in terms of colour and registry, but several, notably the round oars, are showing obvious signs of cracking, so their usability is doubtful. Interestingly, the Turkish decals still look good, which is the option I'd go for were I to get round to building this kit. The Airfix decals are really the standard to live up to for me these days, and the Beauforts are no exception here. The ICM decals also look excellent, with perfect registration, good colour density and little or no excess carrier film. The expansion of subjects is what really pushes them over the Airfix kit here. There are different tail flashes for each aircraft for example, which gives plenty of good scope for the space box too. Now for plastic I struggled to find any meaningful differences between the Airfix and ICM kits here. Both have crisply moulded, medium hardness plastic which holds the kit detail well. Injection gates are small and well placed throughout both kits, frames are well laid out, with built-in protective castings, they are both absolutely top-notch. 
For the older kits, it's actually Frog that snags the bronze here, despite its age, as the HPM kit is obviously a limited run, small scale production with all that entails. Flash, large injection gates, imperfections and so on. The actual plastic used also seems to be less agreeable to work with, and it's also cast in a hideous lurid light blue. So another double gold to the 21st century kits, bronze to frog, and the wooden spoon to HPM. This is another category that's hard to judge between the ICM and Airfix offerings, as Airfix give a comprehensive interior, pilot, detailed undercarriage, full turret interior, and a torpedo in 172nd scale, which is pretty amazing. ICM do all the same thing in 148th detail, making them equivalent in terms of their relative scale appropriate content and detail, with nothing obvious to pick one over the other. For the old kits, we're not comparing apples to apples here, because the HPM kit is designed for the modeler to add a lot of the detail themselves. It's more of a base to build on. The frog kit thus automatically has better content, even if that content, as we shall see later, isn't necessarily correct. So I'm afraid another draw for Airfix and ICM, with Frog getting a bronze and HPM coming last. To be fair here, all of these kits are dimensionally very good. The worst is the old Frog kit, but even that has a commendable average error of just over 1%. The others are all well within that. As you might expect from modern toolings, the larger scale is also the most accurate, since small errors become less significant with increasing scale, but Airfix's kit is incredibly close to the ICM, where the dimensional accuracy starts to get into the realms of measuring errors. So, a good show all round, but ICM first, Airfix a very close second, MPM third, and Frog a commendably close fourth, considering its age. The final area here is really one of obvious errors, since without building the kits it's difficult to give a more in-depth comparison, but there are several things to note. Unfortunately they don't help us with the leaders, since neither the ICM nor Airfix kits have any obvious accuracy issues or oversimplifications here, so I have to tie them for first place once again. Now, HPM kits were designed to be very accurate renditions for experienced modelers, so what they provide are accurate base parts for the modeler to use to create their rendition. As such, what is provided is pretty accurate. The frog kit, however, might be the right size, but it isn't the right shape in several places, notably towards the rear of the aircraft. The tail and rudder are the wrong shape and profile, and I'm not sure what the designers were looking at when it came to the horizontal stabilizers, but it wasn't a Beaufort. Of course, no one else made a Beaufort at the time, so there were many of these kits modified, and this is why HPM made their Beauforts in the first place at the end of the 20th century. So, which is the best Beaufort? Well, to start with, let me reiterate that the ICM kit was sent to me as a review sample, but I hope I've demonstrated along the course of this video that I based my scoring on demonstrable facts, and I've not just given it high scores because it was sent to me by them. It's clear that 60 years of technological progression in the industry have resulted in major differences in what is available to us today, and I think we're pretty blessed in that regard. Now although the ICM kit wins out here, the Airfix kit doesn't sit that far behind, and it is difficult to compare models across scales in an absolute sense. For me, if you want absolutely the best Beaufort kit you can model, the ICM is the clear choice, because both the scale and what you get in the kit will allow you to build a phenomenal model, and right out of the box you get a very high level of detail and content with a heap of options, bear in mind this kit also has two other boxings for another nine versions, so that's 14 different Beauforts without any aftermarket support. Of course, 148 isn't everyone's scale, and the Airfix kit is pretty amazing for a 70 second scale kit. The only detractor I have for it is the lack of provided options, I mean, the HPM Mark II Turkish option is pretty appealing, and ICM have shown that there are a ton of interesting subjects available for the Mark I II. Aftermarket options will allow this of course, but that's an additional cost and I think Airfix could have offered more here. Now the two old kits starkly show the changes that have been developed in the industry. The research that goes into making accurate kits, the moulding technology that allows such crisp mouldings with finesse and fine detail, 
and the production standards of instructions, painting guides, packaging and decals. Now some people will say that modelling has become too expensive. That frog kit would be about £10 adjusted for inflation today, whereas Airfix's version is more than twice as much. That's true, but it's also more than twice the kit, both in parts, accuracy and quality. The average UK salary is more than 50% higher than in 1970, and our disposable income has more than doubled, which means you're getting a higher quality product for the same relative investment. Likewise, the ICM kit is just over twice the price of the Airfix kit, but it's one and a half times the size in all dimensions, or just over three times the volume, which seems like a pretty good deal. Of course, it's still the most expensive kit, so those on a budget might not have that option, so which Beaufort out of the Airfix and ICM is really going to be a personal choice dependent on scale, budget, and your personal preference, but either of them will be an excellent choice. Speaking of Airfix, if you want to win the collector's coin commemorating Flight Lieutenant Alan Pollock's protest by Flying Hawker Hunter XF442 through the span of Tower Bridge on April 4th 1968, then you can enter my free draw for that. Details are in my video unboxing of the kit bookmarked above. Alternatively, you can join my YouTube channel as a member, or sign up to my Patreon to be automatically entered into this and other draws with multiple tickets and so a higher chance to win, plus have access to my personal Discord channel and other perks. As I'm mentioning that, let me give my heartfelt thanks to all of those wonderful channel members and Patreon subscribers for helping me to make these videos. It only then remains for me to give my thanks to Valeria and Dania at ICM for sending me the review sample, I wish you all the best and hope that the conflict in your country is resolved soon. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.